Hi, my name is Jeff and I'm with Vetter Software. This video is going to discuss how you can review the inventory defaults that have been loaded into your Vetter Software account. As you can see, I'm on the schedule in Vetter. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the inventory tab on the top of the screen. And from here, I'll be able to um, do a quick review of, uh, of the data. So first things first, um, you're probably wondering uh, where you can actually see um, the data that were loaded. So what I would do is I would scroll down and I'll go to quick edit down here and I can just select view all items. This is a, a great way to see everything all in one go. We loaded about a hundred items um, into your inventory. So you can see them here and you can see that they're sorted by type or they're, they're sorted actually alphabetically but they're applied to a type. So you can see some of these are preventative, prescriptions, vaccinations, et cetera. Um, a couple of things about quick edit. Um, since we are loading a generic set of inventory into your account, you'll probably notice some items that are not correctly priced, or at least not correctly priced for your business. Um, first thing you can do is you can actually go in and update the pricing simply by clicking on the gear icon and selecting edit item. So for instance, for this particular item, I can edit it and I can update the price from 2234 to whatever I want to update that price to. Once done, I can click save and that price will be updated. That's the first thing. Another thing that you can do is you can, um, you can view by category. So for instance, let's take a look at just the immunizations. And I'm gonna do that by clicking on quick edit and I'm gonna go down to immunizations. Click, there we go. Now you'll notice that there are some items here that say stock and some that just list the vaccine. There is a difference. So you can see here that the, that the vaccine is set up as a, um, is kind of a standalone item, but the stock item actually includes other ways to sell it. So let's actually go into an example. I'm gonna go into the rabies vaccine stock item now, and I'm gonna do a little trick. So I'm actually working on an Apple computer um, I'm going to hold down the command key on my keyboard. It's just to the side of the space bar, and I'm going to click. Now, if you're on, an, on a Windows machine, um, you can actually click on the control key and then click on the item. I'm going to hold down the command key. I'm going to click and watch the top of the screen. It pops up the item in a brand new tab. So I can review the item. I can review all of its details, and I'll just run through this as an example. So you can see here that the rabies vaccine stock item is set to $18. Maybe that's not the price you wanna sell it for. Maybe you're a mobile practice and you charge more because of the convenience of you going and doing a house call. Um, you can edit it. So you simply go to the top of the screen on the left-hand side and you select edit item. You can change the price here. In addition, you can also change the default route and location. You can basically change everything you want, but I, let's say when you give the, uh, the rabies vaccine, you typically don't give it in the right shoulder, you give it in the left hip. You could change it by doing this. I'm gonna leave it as right shoulder for now, but just wanted to show you how you could make that change. So you're probably wondering by looking at this, why is it just rabies vaccine stock? Why don't I have my rabies one year and my rabies three year? Well, actually you do. And for the items that have stock after the name, we actually have more items or different ways that these, these items are sold, and it's here. So you can see under uses, view uses, that we have a rabies one-year vaccine and a rabies three-year vaccine. So if you were to go to a patient and apply a rabies vaccine um, to that patient, so create a record for the patient, you would never see the rabies vaccine stock as something that's for sale. Instead, you would see the rabies one-year vaccine and the rabies three-year vaccine as items that are for sale. So that's that. Um, now, any item that has stock after the name has uses. So something to keep in mind, you don't need to go in and create your distemper one year, your distemper three year, and your distemper three week. Those already exist. Same thing for your FVRCP. So if you see stock after the name, just go into the item and view the uses to see the different ways that that stock can be sold. Cool. Now I'm gonna to go to another item and I'm actually gonna do it through the search box in inventory. I'm gonna to go to FVRCP, F-V-R-C-P. And you can see that it pops right up. 
So here's my FVRCP. Now, you can see this is also set to $18. You can see it's set to FVRCP vaccine stock. Let's say that for you and your clinic, you actually don't use the FVRCP vaccine. Let's say you only use the RCP vaccine. You can edit the item, again, on the top left, put it into edit mode, delete off the FV, and then click save. And then it's gonna show as RCP vaccine stock. Now that's first step. Next thing you want to do is to go to the uses and actually go in and update the uses to the correct name. And you can do that by going to uses, view uses, and then, <coughs> excuse me, you can click on the gear icon for each of the different uses, edit, and you can change the name to what you would call it. So you'd basically remove the FV from the front of the name and it shows RCP vaccine one. And then you also want to update the display name. Now, name is something you use internally at the clinic. Display name is something that would appear on an invoice or on a reminder. Um, so it's customer facing. So display name is customer facing. Name is clinic use. So that's that. Um, also, let's say that your vaccine protocol is not a three-week protocol. The, the data that we loaded into your account is all set to three weeks by default. What you can do is you can open up these items, these number one and number two, and you can just simply change from three weeks to four weeks, no problem. Just click save, and then going forward, that four-week protocol will be set up. I'm just going to click cancel because I'm not going to make any changes, but I just wanted to speak to how this might work. So in short, we've loaded a bunch of inventory into your account. We have loaded the different ways the vaccines would work using uses. Now, just a quick note about uses. Uses are a very handy way for you to be able to sell an item multiple ways when three things hold true. First thing, you're selling them for the same price. In this case, we're selling all of these different vaccines for $18 each. Second thing, you're selling in the same quantity. You're selling one dose at a time. So you're selling for the same price. You're selling in the same dose, which is true. All of these different uh, vaccine items, they're sold one dose at a time, and they're all gonna be sold for $18. The last thing, and this is important, that you're setting these up so that um, you are drawing down from the same physical stock. So each of these vaccines, they're all using vials from the same tray of vaccine. So you're not drawing down something from distemper. You're not drawing down something from feline leukemia. You're, you're drawing down from this physical stock. And that's actually the next segue. So if you want to include the lot number, manufacturer expiration date for a particular vaccine, um, you would do that through a purchase. And I'm gonna to go to a purchase now, and I'm gonna to go to new purchase. So if I wanted to add a lot number for this, I could simply select a supplier from my list. And let's say that I did not have a supplier. So if you're running through this and you're checking on your own right now in your account, you might not have any suppliers added if you have not enabled an integration, say, um, one of our integrated suppliers. You may have to go in and create one. That process is easy. I'm gonna jump out really quick and I'm gonna show you how to set up a supplier. You simply go to contacts on the top of the screen. And from contacts, you're gonna to go to new company. And you can enter as much information as you'd like, but what you can include is Acme um, inventory company. And then you just click save, <coughs> excuse me. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna create a brand new supplier of name Acme inventory company. I'm not gonna save it. I already have a supplier. But in this case, you're not going to add Acme. You're going to add Midwest. You're going to add Covetris. You're going to add whoever you normally buy your, your, uh, your stock through. So I'm just going to ignore this. I'm not going to save it. Instead, I'm going to come up to this little piece of paper with a lightning bolt icon. This is what we call the quick jump icon. When I click on this, it gives me the ability to go back to the last 10 places that I've been in Vetter. In this case, I'm going to go back to my FVRCP vaccine stock. Now, when I do, I'm going to go in and add that purchase, like I mentioned before. So now you've created your contact. So now you can have a supplier that you can apply that purchase to. I'm going to click on purchases again. I'm going to select new purchase, and I'm going to select my supplier. In this case, it's default vendor. For the manufacturer, I'm going to set it up as Acme. 
which of course you're not gonna do, but I'm gonna set it up as Acme. Um, I'm gonna set up my lot number, um, one, two, three, four, five, alpha, and I'm gonna set my expiration date. Now the date picker in Vetter works the same way throughout the product. What you're gonna do is you're gonna click into the date field and then you're gonna see this dialog. Let's say that this vaccine expires the end of December, 2022. I could click this arrow forward 24 times. I'm too lazy, I'm not gonna do that. I could also type in DEC space 31 comma space 2022. I'm too lazy, I don't wanna do that either. Instead, given that I'm lazy, I'm gonna click on the month to go to month, year to go to years, and I'm gonna drill down. So I'm gonna click on 2022, December 31st, done. Very easy, and it satisfies my lazy criteria. So it, I'm, I'm happy with that. So I've, I've set up my, my supplier, my manufacturer, the date, the lot number, the expiration date, and then I set the quantity. So let's say I got a tray of 50 vaccines. When I click save, I'm gonna be adding these 50 vaccines to my inventory. And I should mention one other thing. If you want to track the cost for this purchase, you can. You can simply type in the cost for the 50 vaccines that you're adding. So again, it's gonna to be total cost for the quantity you're adding. If say you're adding a tray of 28 vaccines because that's all you have left in the tray, what you might do instead is put in 28 and then you can prorate the cost for that 28 if you want to include a cost. Now for vaccines, typically you don't need to have a cost if you don't want to, because um, you typically don't have a cost plus markup on vaccines. Um, typically they're fixed price. But if you wanted to, you could, and this is how you would manage that cost. So I would click save, and that's gonna be added into the FVRCP stock. And then whenever any of these uses are used, so number one, number two, number three, they would all draw down from lot number one, two, three, four, five alpha with an expiration date of December 31, 2022. So that's that. Last thing that I wanna mention, um, as I mentioned before, when you are in your inventory, you can use quick edit. It's a very easy way to um, kind of see everything that you've got in a single category. Now you might be wondering, given all this new information you have, what the easiest way to do your price updates might be. My recommendation is to do it in order. So basically go in and look at say pharmacy. And then you can see all the pharmacy items that we have loaded. And you can simply go in and do the changes to these items as you see fit. You can either do it using the, the control key or the command key click to open the item in a brand new tab, or you can click on the gear icon, edit item, and simply update the price in place. Now, either way works just fine, but this would probably be your first step. Next step would be to go in and add your, uh, your lot number information via adding purchases to those items that have lot numbers. And I'm also asked pretty frequently, if I wanted to go in and start adding lot numbers, what is the priority? What would be the most important thing to add those lot numbers to? Normally what I would recommend is that you add lot numbers to your controlled medications first. That's the most important because that's the stuff that can put you in the greatest legal jeopardy if you don't manage it appropriately. So go in, set up the lot numbers for your controlled substances. That would be the very first thing. The next thing I would consider would be the rabies vaccine. Go in and add the lot numbers in for your rabies vaccine, so add the purchases, because as you draw down from those rabies vaccines and you generate the vaccine certificates for those items, you're going to want to include that information on the certificate to make it valid. The next thing would be all other vaccines, and then after that, all other pharmacy. And then if you wanna go crazy and start adding lot numbers for your diet products and other stuff that you might sell, feel free, have at it. But as a priority, I would say controlled substances, followed by rabies vaccine, followed by all other vaccines, followed by uh, other prescription medications. So that's that. Hopefully this has given you a good idea of the way um, you can work with the inventory that we've provided by default with your new Vetter account. We are very happy that you chose Vetter. If you have any questions, um, I recommend that you click on the, the question mark icon here and select help desk. Um, you'll be able to submit a ticket to our support team. Um, again, we do provide free support. Feel free to use us. Um, we are happy to help. We also provide trainings um, on Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturdays. Um, 
different types of training, admin setup training, uh, workflow training, um, new clinic setup. So if you have questions about those, just feel free to contact the support team. We're always happy to help. Thank you for your time. Really appreciate it. And um, I hope you have a great day. And I hope you really enjoy using better software. Thanks and take care.